Hi there, welcome back. This is lesson four in our organic chem unit. Today we are going to talk about what functional groups are and how they are named when they're part of a compound. So what works best for this lesson is if you are following along with the note sheet that says naming drawing functional groups and following along and practicing as we are going through it. Uh, there are two documents for this lesson, the note sheet and the practice sheet. We are going to go over the practice sheet together towards the end of this video. As it looks like there is no homework due tonight, just make sure you are following the schedule posted to the website and whatever other announcements your teacher gives you. So starting with this, I have this on the top of your sheet and if you want to pause this for a minute and take some time to look this over. This is a molecule of capsaicin. This is what makes uh, pepper spicy. So what we're talking about today is functional groups. And if you look at your reference table, table R has all of the functional groups that you guys are responsible for. If you want to, take a second, try to identify as many as you can by just looking at table R. And then at the end of the video, you can go back to it and see if you know you were right, if you had to make any changes. So you can literally see, you know, growth throughout the lesson. So functional groups are a group of different elements to combine that are attached to your hydrocarbon chains. And depending on the compound, it changes the function and structure of the entire compound. So there are different functional groups that each have different names and different properties. This will make more sense when we talk about what those functional groups are. So, when we're naming functional groups, the first one is halides. So halide, it kind of looks like the term halogen, and those are things in group 17. So things like iodine, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and stuff like that. So here is an example of a compound with a halide on it. And the question is, well, name it. So right here, you can see that we have a chlorine added to it. And chlorine is part of group 17. So if we're going to name it. We have these rules to name it. And the first thing, just like what we've done so far, is name the chain. And so we have five carbons. So we name that pent. And then we have single bonds between those. So we have A and E, ane. So that's name the chain. The second is add the halogen prefix. So chlorine becomes chloro. Uh, fluorine becomes fluoro. Bromine becomes bromo, and iodine becomes iodo. That one's fun to say. So if we have the chlorine, we're going to be using the chloro to add the halogen prefix. So you get chloropentane. And just like branches, double bonds, and triple bonds, we have to give the location as to where that halogen is. And again, we want to use the smallest number. So if we label our carbons one, two, three, four, five, we can see that this is on carbon number two. So it's two chloropentane. And so we followed our three steps for naming. And you can even write this as a condensed formula and it would look like that. So whenever you're, this goes for the rest of the ones as we're going through as well, each functional group has its own naming rules. So it's not really something you need to remember totally, because table R does have kind of an example of what the name looks like. But as we're learning them, this is a great resource for all of you. Okay, next group is called the alcohol group. And so the alcohol functional group is this OH. So this is why we talked about, you know, bases before. This OH group 
is on top of a hydrocarbon is the alcohol group. So if we're going to name this, our first step is name the chain. So we have two carbons, and that is F. And then between those two carbons, we have uh, single bonds. So we write an. Now, when we are writing function names with functional groups, and we have an ending to add, we normally get rid of that e. So we have e t h f for the number of carbons, a n to show that there are single bonds. So we name the chain. Next, we have the o l ending. So we have ethanol. So this is why we drop the E. If we had, can't spell. If we had ethaneal, that just looks weird. So we drop the E for the ethane. Uh, so we get ethanol. So we added the OL ending. And again, just like uh, before with branches, double bonds, triple bonds, you gotta give the location of the OH group. And you always want to use that smallest number. So in this case, the smallest number is 1. So it would be 1 ethanol. Now, for this specific example, um, we don't technically need the number because there's only two carbons it could be on, and it's always on the smallest one. But just a good habit to get into. Next is an ether. So this one's fun to say, an ether. Now, how you know something is an ether? is you have an oxygen in the middle and two chains, two hydrocarbon chains on either side. So ethers have carbon chains on either side of an oxygen. So we have one carbon chain, two carbon chain. Now, the way we're naming this is we have to name the two chains separately. So here's one chain, here's two chains, and so Ethers have two chains. Insert picture of two chains. Um, okay, so naming a one carbon branch is methyl. Naming a two carbon branch is ethyl. So then, so we have methyl, ethyl, and then the last step we did this is add the word ether. So this compound would be called methyl ethyl ether. That one's a lot of fun to say. I'll say that five times fast. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you have first, as long as you have both of them, and then you are good to go. Okay, next functional group is called an aldehyde, and that is found with a double bond O to a carbon at the end keyword is end of a compound. So you'll see a double bond O multiple times throughout this lesson. But you have a, if you have a double bond O and an H connected to a C at the end of the compound, that is an aldehyde. So when we are naming this, we've got to name the chain first. So in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So that's hep. We have single bonds between those. So we have a n, and so we did the first one. Now we have to add the a l suffix. So a suffix is an ending. So we have a l. So we have heptanel, and that is how you name it. Now you don't have to give the location of this functional group because it's always, always, always at the end. So it's the naming the chain and then the a l ending. Okay, so you probably heard of formaldehyde. It literally has aldehyde in the name. It is a type of aldehyde, a very basic one. But you can also have a casual dehyde. Ha ha ha. Okay, moving on. Laughing by myself is not fun. Is ketones. Now ketones have a C double bond O, but in the middle of your compound. So this is different from the aldehyde, because aldehydes have that double bond OH at the end. Ketones can have it anywhere in the middle. So when we're naming this, again, your first step is naming the chain. We have three carbons. So that is prop. 
we have single bonds between those carbons. So we have AN. And again, we're dropping that E in the ANE ending, just so we can add on another ending. And so for ketones, we're going to add ONE. That's the ending for ketones. So this reads as propanone. And now we have to give the location as to where this double bond O is. So remember, it can be in different locations. If we label our carbons one, two, three, this is on the second carbon. So that is two propanone. Now again, technically, for this specific example, you don't need the number because there's only one spot that's not at the end of your compound, but getting into the habit of adding these numbers is very, very important. Next we have organic acids. So if you think back to the acid-base unit on table K, I always mix up the acid-base table, I think it's K and base is there. Anyway. For the acids, there were some of the acids that said organic acid, and it had COOH at the end of it. So I think I had mentioned that we'll get there later. Well, now is later. And these are organic acids. So organic acids have, I call it a CO group, a COOH group, at the end of their molecules. So you have a double bond O and an OH. And so that makes it the organic acid. So when we're naming this, we got to name the chain. So we have two carbons, so that's F, a single bond between those, that's A, N. And again, we're dropping that E. And then we add oic acid. So we add oic acid. And so your name is ethanoic acid. So again, you don't need the location for this because the Ku group, the C double bond OH, is always, always, always at the end. Next is amines. And if you go back to the first slide of actual notes as to what A and am what function groups are, the meme might make more sense. So what an amine is, it's an N somewhere in the compound. So with this, when we're naming it, and these are, backtrack a second, amines are pretty easy to identify because they have the nitrogen. Though the next functional group also has nitrogen, but there is more to it. So with these amines, when we're naming them, our first job is to name the chain. So in the picture that I gave you, is something that, these are how organic chemists write structures. So each dot, represents a carbon, okay? So this is C, 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 and C. And if we think back, remember that every carbon needs to have four lines coming off of it. So you have invisible H's, like this. So as you can see, this gets very messy and it takes a lot of time to draw. Now, with this, this is why you get these spiky looking things like this. So again, going back, here's our amine group. If we're gonna name it, we have to name the chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So we name that prepped. And they're all single bonds. So we have a n if we had double bonds it would look like that it would be very obvious you had a double bond but we don't have that in that case and then our next rule so we name the chain is adding the suffix amine so we have heptamine heptanamine like that so we added that and then adding the location of the n and again, we have to use the smallest number. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two is the smallest location. So it would be two heptanamine. So this is what I was saying, I think a few days ago, naming the, having you guys say these names out loud is 
pretty funny because these are tricky to say and but they're fun okay almost done next is am mimes this is another one with a nitrogen but it has more to it than an amine amides have a c double bond o and an n h2 so that is what the amides look like so when we're naming this just like everything else we start by naming the chain and we have five carbons so we name that pent and then we have single bonds so we have a n and then when we have the amide we just literally write amide so we get pentanamide now we don't need to give the location because this only happens at the end of the compound. Okay, last one is an ester. So an ester, and this part, this bullet point is very, very important. A lot of questions get asked about it. Is what happens is the product of when you mix an acid, an organic acid, and an alcohol. So when they react, you get an ester. Uh, the whole mechanism behind how that works, we don't really, we'll get into a little bit uh, next week, but not super important. What though you can identify an ester as is a C double bond O with another O in the middle. So it kind of looks like an ether and a ketone kind of mixed together. But this whole section gives you the ester. Now, naming these is a pain. That's why I saved this one for last. But again, using these rules, it makes it a lot easier and you have this resource to look back at. So, our first job is to name the chain bonded to the O first. So, that means this section. So, we have three carbons. We name that prop. It says name the chain and add the YL ending, the suffix. So we get propyl, just like that, kind of naming it as, uh, as if it was a branch. And then we have to name the chain with the double bond. So let me change colors here. That's this chain. So again, we have three carbons, prop. We have single bonds between those, A, N. And then we add the O8 um, suffix. So it'd be A N O A T E. So this reads as propyl, propyl O8. So this is the first branch connected to the O. The second branch connected to the double bond O with the O A T E ending. Again, this is what a functional group with that would look like. And that's pretty much it. So, as of right now, this is the end of the note sheet. So what works is if you take a second, look at the other sheet that says identifying and naming organic compounds with functional groups. Try that, and then come back to review it. Or if you're still stuck and need some help, stay as long as you want and then go back, practice, and then come back. Up to you. I'm not watching. You can do whatever works best for you. Okay. So, let's start with the first one. Our functional group here is that, and that is called a ketone, characterized by that C double bond O in the middle. And we name our chain, which is prop, three carbons. We have single bonds between the carbons, so A, N. And then we add the ketone ending, which is O, N, E, and you get propanone. Next is the next one. Here we have bromines. So the functional group is a halide. You can even that specific and say bromine. And so we're, if we're going to name it, again, our first step is to name the chain. So we have two carbons. And then we, name, we have a single bond, so we write A, A, N, E. Then I got to go back and name the bromines. So the prefix for bromine is bromo, but notice how we have 
to bromines, you have to say dibromo. Dibromo means you have two bromine functional groups somewhere. And the locations are on carbon 1 and on carbon 2. So you get 1,2-dibromoethane. The last one in this slide is here. Again, this is another halide. And in this case, it is chlorine. And our first job is to name the carbon chain. And that is pentane. Then we have to add the chloro prefix. So we get chloropentane. And we have to add the location of that chlorine, which is on carbon number two, like that, boom, done. Okay. Next row is this. Our functional group in this example is this whole thing, so the majority of the compound. And this is an organic acid characterized by the C double bond O and OH group. And if we're naming it, we name the carbon chain, which is two carbons, so eth, single bond between them, AN. And then the ending for organic acids is oic acid. That's it. Next is this one. Our functional group is this OH group. And that OH group is an alcohol. And when we're naming these alcohols, we name the chain first. That's but, because we have four carbons. AN, because we have single bonds between those. OL, because of the OH group. And then one, the location of that alcohol. Remember, this OH group can be placed in different locations, so it's very important to give the address of that OH group. Okay, next one, last one on the front page. Our functional group is another C double bond OOH. This is another organic acid. So just like the one previously we did, name the chain first. So we have five carbons, that is pent. We have single bonds, so we say AN, and then the organic acid ending, or suffix, is oic acid, so you get pan pentanic, pentanoic, rather, pentanoic acid, even though I get tongue-tied on these sometimes, and that's it. Flipping to the back of the page, more practice, the functional group in this example is right there, and that is an aldehyde characterized by the double bond O at the end of the compound. And if we're naming an aldehyde, our first job is to name the carbon chain, which is F because we have two carbons, AN because they have single bonds between the carbons, and then AL to show that you have an aldehyde. Again, you don't need the location of the aldehyde because it's always, always, always at the end. Next, we have that functional group. That is a ketone, a double bond O, somewhere in the middle. And then, if we're naming it, name our carbon chain first. Our carbon chain is four carbons. So we say but, not but. We write an because there are single bonds between them. And then the ending for ketones is one. And again, you want to give that location to the ketone. So it is two butanone. Next is this, characterized by an O in the middle and a carbon chain on either side. This is an ether. There is a meme on the website about functional groups and ethers. Look at it. Laugh at it. If you get it, awesome. If you don't, I did give you kind of the answer uh, right below it on the website. So go to the unit 12 page, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it will be there. 
So when we're naming our ethers, we have to name the two different chains. So this is an ethyl group. I lied. This is a methyl group. This is a methyl group because you have one carbon on either side. And so instead of writing methyl methyl ether, we can write dimethyl ether. So the di just means you have two of those methyl groups. Okay, last three. This one, we have that OH group that is characteristic of an alcohol. If we're naming it, we have to look at the carbons first. We have one carbon, so that's meth. A-N, because you got that single bond. You can't really have a double bond with one carbon. And then that OH group is gives you that OL ending, so you get methanol. You don't need the number here because there's literally only one carbon it can go on. Okay, second to last one. There's your functional group. This is an amide characterized by the C double bond O with the N and the H at the end of a compound. So if we're naming this, we want to look at the carbon chain first. We have two carbons, so that is F. We have an AN to show that single bond. And the ending for amides is amides. So you get ethanamide. Okay. Last one, we have the two O's in it. This is an ester. There are jokes about this that I am not making on videos, if only we were in person for these. Anyway, not my jokes, jokes from other teachers, but we'll leave it at that. When we are naming these, we want to name the branch off the O first, and this is methyl, one carbon, and then you have to name the other part. So this is F, you have single bonds A, N, and you get the O, A ending. So your name for this would be methyl ethanoate. Now if you're still confused about this, it is totally okay. We are going to spend time tomorrow, actually, I think today is technically Friday. So on Monday, or if you want to go ahead now, you can, well we're going to practice with functional group dissect like region style questions. So we practice and I go through all the questions in another video. So that should help you with the cast of learning that is due on Monday about functional groups. So that is it for today. If you have any questions, let me or your chem teacher know and have a wonderful day.